I can't really remember the last time I had a chance to go in the backyard and just run around. School's just so much pressure that every day I'd wake up dreading it. I'm afraid that our children are going to sue us for stealing their childhoods. I would spend six hours a night on my homework. You have to get into the top schools. You have to take tests and do interviews. It's gone way to the extreme. We're all caught up in it. In America, if you don't earn a lot of money, something went wrong. The pressure comes from the colleges, from the parents, from the government, but it has to stop. You have to do well now so you can get into a good college. Everyone expects us to be superheroes. You have a fear from the parents that my kid needs to be able to get a job. How do you expect us to do well when you can't even make mistakes? You're dedicating your whole life to your grades. You have to be smart, and you have to be involved in the arts. I have soccer practice every day, plus the homework on top of that. Produce, produce, produce. It's impossible. I couldn't cope. I've gone through bouts of depression just because you feel so swamped. I almost, like, had an emotional breakdown. There have been six suicides in our school district. Our students are pressured to perform. They're not necessarily pressured to learn deeply and conceptually. So what is that going to mean when we have a whole population of dentists and doctors who've been trained from a script? Things that actually get our students to think are pushed aside. These kids come to the table with this creativity and this love of learning. Let's just not take it out of them. I think the United States really needs to rethink how we do schooling. The economic future of the country depends on our addressing this. We need to redefine success for kids. It's got to be something we do together. All of us as a society, almost as a movement. Jobs need you to be a critical thinker. They need you to be a problem solver. We need to really think, what does it take to produce a happy, motivated, creative human being? for parents, but is it worth it? Should kids be putting in the extra hours after the school day ends? Joining us from kidspot.com.au is psychology researcher and author, Dr Justin Coulson. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. We should probably be very clear as well. Um, we're talking about primary, primary school aged children and what is the research actually showing? We've got really... Uh, well, look, it's a little bit controversial because there's this symbolic value with homework. People think that it's good. People think that it's important for kids to be doing it. But research from international studies, across national studies like PISA uh, and TIMS, the Trends in International Maths and Science Study, all of these data are telling us that as homework goes up, achievement and grades go down. Yeah. Which is another way of saying that, kids, if you do your maths homework, you'll do worse. Yeah, it's absolutely right. Although, isn't a lot of those studies say, I know Finland, for example, has very little homework in yep. juniors and a lot of playtime, much more yep. playtime than we have, mm. but they also have lower um, studio, student to teacher ratios and higher educated teachers as well, so there's probably other factors involved. There, there's a lot of variables in yeah. it, but what we're seeing is across, you know, 40 or 50 nations, yep. the, the same trends are there. So, yes, Finland has this exceptional and remarkable uh, education system compared to Australia and the United States and the UK. But it doesn't seem to matter which nation yeah. we look at, we get this consistent pattern of negative outcomes as homework goes up. And I, lo I loved what you'd written because it all makes absolute perfect sense. And one of the things you really crystallise is for the, the, the smarter kids or the kids who have no problem with school, they don't need to do the homework. Boring, and for the yeah. kids who are struggling, they're not going to be able to do it unassisted mm. anyway. So it actually makes them mm. feel worse. So and do you remember when you were a kid and you were sitting in front of your desk sobbing while your mum or your dad's standing over mm. you saying, you've got to figure this out. Mum and dad don't know how to do it because <laughs> teaching has no. changed we're since Googling, we were there. We're Googling well, behind yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> number line I struggle with, Sarah's helped me with that, with, for my daughter to do adding and subtracting. But <laughs> as a parent though, what then can we say to teachers who keep um, prescribing homework for our kids? What, there, what, what do we say to them? There's a couple of things. First of all, uh, if you jump online and Google my name, Justin mm -hmm. Coulson, and homework letter, or go to Kidspot, yeah. you'll find my homework letter. And for the last 10 years, because my oldest is 16 now, mm. uh, for the last 10, or about to turn 16, sorry, 
She says she's 16. For the last 10 years, I've sent a letter to school each year to my kids' teachers saying, well, here's what the data says and here are the reasons that my family doesn't do it. We want the kids to have extracurricular activities. We want them to be involved with mm. the family. We don't want family conflict mm. and, and so on. But we do want our kids to read and we really appreciate how invested you are in our kids' education. Mm -hmm. So I send this homework letter to school. I've only ever had one teacher out of uh, mm. many who's sort of gone, yeah, no, I'm not happy about that. The rest of them have said, the schools we totally have been agree. Okay. That's fantastic. Well, the schools haven't been thrilled about it, but they've, <laughs> but they've accepted they it and they've said, okay. Out. But yeah, you also right. have a doctor in front of your name as well, so okay. make it easier to... I, I thank my parents for that. They call me Dr. And, no, and, <laughs> and also, of course, doing lots of reading at home is fantastic mm. and must be encouraged. And, of course, yes. uh, doing projects and stuff like that that kids find fun is... But is play. Kids well. learn through yeah. play, and that's been proven over Especially playing with friends and being creative and imaginative. And we don't have to solve all their boredom problems. The more they are the more curious and creative they become. Well, let's look at some come feedback that's house, coming please. in on <laughs> this issue. We have uh, this from Alison. I like my child getting a little bit of homework each day. Keeps parents in touch with what their children are doing. It also allows you to see if your child is struggling and perhaps overworked. And then there's this. I believe we should be teaching our kids how to think, not what to think. Finding out new information should be fun, not a chore that you get punished if you don't do it, yeah, great. says Good Sandra. And then there's this one, other than reading, no, it is just another job for overworked teachers. Living life is the best form of learning in my books. So many teachers Jenny. say that. I'm sick yeah. of marking homework. Yeah. It's just one more thing to do. Yeah. 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 Well, look, it is our daily dilemma. Right. Homework for kids, good or bad, bad. you can join the discussion at kidspot.com.au. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everybody and welcome to the Dennis Prager Show where we really do talk about everything in life six minutes past the hour. The Case Against Homework is the name of this book. How homework is hurting our children and what we can do about it. When I tell you folks the story of me and homework, I will alienate a certain percentage of you. When you hear how little I did <laughs> when I was in high school, I still marvel at the fact that I graduated. I have, for those of you who think I'm conservative, please know that I have the most radical views on schooling imaginable. The uh, co-author of this book, The Case Against Homework, is Nancy Kalish. She's a former senior editor at Child and a columnist for Red Book. Nancy Kalish could have no idea that Red Book magazine changed my life. Uh, I did. It did. I will tell you the story later. I give you my word. It is literally true. And it's a, it's a really fun story. In any event, the book, again, The Case Against Homework, Nancy Kalish. Welcome to the Dennis Prager Show. Hi, Dennis. Thanks so much for having me on. Well, let, let, let's, get, let's really understand here. What is it you are proposing? Basically, um, I used to be a true believer in homework as a parent. And I used to actually write those articles for Child and Red Book about how to get your kid to knuckle down and do it. And, and stop complaining. But, you know, what happened is when my daughter started getting incredibly overloaded with homework. And How, wait, wait, what grade? In seventh grade. Seventh grade, lucky. go ahead. Now they get overloaded earlier. Yeah. She started to say she hated school, like, every day. And I started to see all her love of learning sort of completely drip away bit by bit. That's right. And so I started to look into the research for the first time. I have to admit, I'm really ashamed to admit, in fact, that I didn't look into the research before when I was writing all those articles. And I was astounded and then, frankly, furious when I found out that the research just doesn't support overloading our kids like this. We are making a huge mistake. Well, well, hold on. You see, the problem there is, by the use of the word overloading, you've, of course, shaped the argument in your favor. I happen to agree with you, but okay. one man's overloading is the next guy's not overloading. Well, let me give you some examples. Um, the National Education Association supports 10 minutes, which is an, um, an, an association of millions of yeah, 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 we're aware of it. It's okay. not my favorite group. All Go right, ahead. Sorry. Also the no, National no, no, that's PTA. fine. I don't care. Go ahead. Cite it. What do they All say? Right. The National PTA also, and, the ex and many experts, support 10 minutes per grade level per night. So that's 10 minutes for a first grader, 30 minutes for a third grader, 90 minutes for a ninth grader, and so on, up to a maximum of 120 minutes for high school. Okay, so when we started 
interviewing parents around the country, we found many first graders with more than an hour of homework, many third graders tackling two or three, high schoolers tackling five. My own daughter was... High schoolers with high five schooler. hours homework? Five hours of homework. My own daughter in seventh grade all of a sudden went from a manageable amount to four hours plus a night and every day on the weekend. And you know what started to happen, and this is why alarm bells first went off in my head. The homework took over our lives. We could no longer have dinner together. She couldn't go to her grandfather's birthday party. Um, you know, if just we couldn't have conversations, everything revolved around homework. When we went across the country and interviewed parents and kids, we found out that kids are giving up all sorts of extracurricular activities they love, reading for pleasure, going to Bible study groups. I mean, really important key things. And again, the research, which I'd be happy to tell you about, just doesn't support it. Why so, did this happen? Well, I think there's a mistaken belief that, you know, in America, you know, we always think that more is better, and it seems... It seems that it would make sense with homework. I mean, if you think about it, you know, you'd think, oh, more practice has to lead to, you know, uh, more learning, better knowledge. But the truth is it doesn't. What happens is after a certain point, kids developmentally are certainly are, are just not able to cope with doing more than a certain amount of homework. They're not able to focus for, for longer. They're not able to absorb the information. So when you force them to sit there and do it, and for many kids, it's like literally doing their taxes every night. What happens is they start to burn out and hate learning. That's and, right. And, and, and yeah. it's, really, it's really destructive and counterproductive, and we're not getting the you know, super uber students that we want and expect. And let me just say that this is not just me. Um, a 2006 review of 180 studies on homework by Duke University, which is pretty much all the studies that are out there on homework, found that there is almost zero correlation between homework and any kind of academic success in elementary school and long-term learning, a very moderate correlation in middle school. And even in high school where there is a correlation, um, those benefits max out at two hours. And after two hours, they start to rapidly diminish. So it's just not worth it. We're really torturing our kids for nothing. And you know one of the things, Dennis, that really broke my heart when I started to look into this subject is, um, in contrast, there's a huge University of Michigan study that came out in 2004. And it said, you know what they said, the single strongest predictor of a child's academic success as well as lower drug use and alcohol use, better eating habits and better behavior, was the family dinner hour. Eating dinner as a family was the most important predictor of a kid's academic success as well as these other things. And, you know, when I look back over the, the year, the last year where my daughter was so overloaded with homework, I can literally count on the fingers, on my fingers, how many times we had had dinner together. And it just broke my heart. Or another way of putting it is the bonds with the family yes. are more important. You see, I, I have said this. Th this is an example, Nancy, of, of where I, I tell my listeners over and over my view of studies, that in 99% of the cases, they either confirm common sense or they're wrong. <laughs> that is my view of studies. And I, and I, 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 I cannot think of almost any exception. And I, I have said this to, to my listeners all the time. First of all, why don't people apply the rules to their children that they do to themselves? Do they do five hours of homework? Absolutely. Well, why, don't, why don't people come home and do five hours of work? You're so right. If they had jobs like that, most of them would quit it. And yet they think nothing of subjecting their kids to it. Yes, exactly. That's why, by the way, though this is a separate subject, I, I said, why don't we apply these criteria generally? Uh, people people say it's wrong to uh, reward kids with monetarily for grades. Now, I'm not a big fan of it, but I have no problem with it. We get rewarded for our work. Why can't they get rewarded for theirs? We have very different criteria for our children's work than for our own. Yes, we do, and we manage to forget that kids, you know, if we're all these magazine articles, and I've written some of them, are always, you know, 
uh, telling us to find more balance in our lives and to relax and de-stress. And yet that all goes out the window with our kids who are even less able to cope with this kind of stress. I mean, you, can, you know, if you talk to kids around the country, it's really frightening. Not, None, a lot of them really don't like learning anymore. They're so Oh, exactly, exactly. I love learning because I didn't do homework in high school. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I believe you. I was so lucky that I was given th- this this insight as a kid. I said, I don't care what college I go to. I told my parents to their great uh, uh, frustration, but I'm not going to do all this homework. I am going to live life. And 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 I did. And this is what parents need to understand, and they don't. They, they get carried away because the experts are giving the homework, and the word expert ends all discussion. It's true. It's true. And, you know, it goes beyond also just hurting the, your bonds with your family and hurting um, a kid's love of learning. I, I really think that there are other things that are suffering as well. Um, for instance, I, I truly think that there is a big connection between homework and the childhood obesity problem in the United States. You know, there are dozens and dozens of studies showing that sitting and watching hours of television contributes to childhood obesity. Well, what do most kids do when they get home from school? Instead of going out to play like they used to when we were kids, their, their, their house rule generally is that you have to sit down and do your homework first before you can do anything else. By that time, they're too exhausted to go out and play. Mentally and physically, it's dark a lot of the time, especially in the winter. And, you know, they're sitting still for hours and studying, and they're not burning those calories, as well as um, we had many child development ex- uh, experts, you know, there's that word expert, but many child development psychologists and other experts tell us that is, and pediatricians tell us it's exercise and physical activity is so important to kids not only physical development, but mental development. It actually helps create those new, you know, neurons, connections in the brain. And when kids yeah, yeah, all yeah. right, hold on there, Nancy Kalish. Her book, folks, The Case Against Homework, How Homework is Hurting Our Children and What We Can Do About It. I'll take your calls, 1-8-Prager-776, The Dennis Prager Show. Welcome back, my friends. This is Dennis Prager, 21 minutes past the hour. Nancy Kalish, my guest, she's co-author of The Case Against Homework. And she really does develop a case. And uh, for all those of you who are impressed, and I don't mean this in any way uh, as a put-down at all, but for those of you who are impressed by studies, she cites, she cites many studies. And you would think that academics would be the first to be champions of homework, uh, but it turns out that there are plenty of these studies that show otherwise. Uh, I worry, you mentioned a burnout, Nancy, and we're going to take calls here at one eight prager 776 I'd like to tell you a story. I was on a plane coming back from a speech in Northern California at UC Santa Cruz, in fact. And I was sitting on this plane next to a woman who was on the cell phone before we took off, and obviously I heard what she was saying. She was It was clear she was talking to her son and that she was very concerned, and it appeared that he just couldn't do any more work at school. To make a long story short, I asked her about it. I said, I, look, I overheard. May I ask you a little about it? And she was very open. And, and her son is at Harvard Medical School. You, you, you can't get uh, more, more elite than that. And she said, he just he can't do any more work. And I said, I, I, I said I, did he work very hard in high school? She said, absolutely. College? Absolutely. I said, he's burned out. He's burned out at 23 years of age. And, and one of the reasons I really believe that I have the energy that I do to do as much writing and lecturing and radio as I do is that I did so little work in high school. I So I was never burned out, and I've never demanded from my own kids that. And so uh, this notion of hours of homework a day, well, what exactly do they do at school, and why don't adults do homework in the day, at, at night, which is what you and I mentioned? Well, you know, they've actually stepped it up at school as well, and that's another reason why homework, kids are getting burned out so much with um, No Child Left Behind and just a general um, demand for, quote-unquote, more rigorous 
uh, education. They're taking away things like physical education, art classes, music classes, and they're replacing that with more instruction time. So that by the time the kids get home and have to start their hours of homework, they're really fried, especially the little ones. You know, there's a horrifying statistic from the University of Michigan that shows that for elementary school kids, homework has jumped 51% mm. since the 80s. It's just too much for these kids. They're, they're, they're not coping well. In fact, here's another, I know you don't love studies and statistics, but here's no, another. No, I love them when, they, when they're accurate. Go well, ahead. Well, here's another scary one. This is from the Yale Early Education Center, I believe. They found that more kindergartners are being expelled around the country than ever before. Expelled so, for sexual harassment? <laughs> no. Well, so why would this be, right? And it's not sexual Yeah, right. Why? That's right. Why? Why? Because the kids are unable to sit still all day at school yeah. without acting out. And yeah. especially the little boys yeah. just can't cope with this kind of instruction. Well, why, 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 what, what, kindergarten has now diminished the physical exercise time? It has. There's no more PE. There's no more naps. I mean, they're really driving these kids hard. Kindergarten is really the new first grade. You know, it's amazing. I didn't do a thing. You know what I did in kindergarten? Built blocks, took naps, and ran around. <laughs> right. <laughs> and look how well you turned out. No, well, that's mean, my seriously. point. That's exactly my point. It is. It's terrible what we're taking away from these kids. I really don't want to stand, sound dramatic, but it's no less than their childhoods that this is taking away. And you know what? Eventually, the tide will turn, hopefully, and we'll all people will, re will read the research, recognize that we're wrong, and hopefully things will reverse themselves a bit. But, you know, it's going to be too late for these kids who are being expelled in kindergarten. Expelled from kindergarten Isn't for not working sad? hard enough. That's a real symbol. <laughs> I also wanted to it's... mention that, Dennis, it's not just the fact that these kids are getting hours' worth of work. A lot of the work is really very tedious, to be honest, very rote learning. The kids, it's, it's, it's really busy work. And what's happening is it's not engaging these children. Again, it's making them think learning is boring. That's mostly, it's not because teachers are evil or anything. It's they're so overworked themselves that many of them, we surveyed hundreds of teachers across the country, many of them said, Homework was really sort of an afterthought. They just gave the assignments the teacher did before them. They didn't really think about it very much. They don't grade it often. So nobody's really paying attention to what's going on with our kids. That seems that way. Well, we'll take a contrary view. Minneapolis and John. Hi, John. Dennis Prager and Nancy Kalish, author of The Case Against Homework. Hello. Very interesting topic you guys have going today, and I... Uh... I definitely sympathize with a lot of uh, the points that have been brought up. However, I'm 22 years old and I'm in college. And from my perspective, I feel that uh, a few hours of homework a night is healthy because a lot of, a lot of kids, especially high school kids, um, and me being somewhat fresh out of high school, uh, know that there's so many uh, different venues out there that kids can digress to that can be really detrimental to their future. And I believe that if you have somewhat of a, a, a solid schedule, and which requires you to kind of limit, especially, you know, Monday through Friday, your, your evenings a little bit more, uh, that would, you know, be beneficial for the student. I don't see, and, you know, I, since early elementary school, I don't believe that kindergarten and first grade, I had this you know, inordinate amount of homework to do. But I remember since early elementary school, maybe third or fourth grade, every night, you know, I've had at least an hour or two of homework. And I All right, let's get Nancy's reaction. Well, I would respectfully disagree, John. I mean, first of all, there's homework is taking away from not just kids going out and, let's say, experimenting with drugs or alcohol. It's taking away from kids playing musical instruments. It's taking away from kids reading for pleasure. It's taking away from kids doing community service. It's taking away from kids doing Bible study. So I don't really buy that homework is the only solution or else kids are going to get into trouble. I mean, we, I think we need to trust our kids a little bit more. The ones well, who are going to get into trouble are probably going to get into trouble yeah. anyway. But, in a, yeah, in an ideal world, that would be great if we could all trust our kids. However, the, you know, the world isn't perfect, and there's a lot of people out there who, you know, want to try to do harm to kids, to people my age. And there's a lot of people my age who are confused, 
and don't have a, you know a solid background that they come from, and they're gonna they're gonna lean this or that way depending on who's pulling them. They're just gonna they're gonna get pulled, and without you know a vocational study and a pursuit. Uh, all right, all right, uh, John. I got a question for you. It's it's just a history question. Yes, Can sir. you identify Stalin? Yeah, Stalin was uh, buddies with Hitler in World War II. All righty, I thank you for your for your call. Say goodbye. Okay. You know, the, uh, Dennis, what I would say is more of an answer oh, to John's concern is really that maybe what we need is better after school programs for kids around the country, where they can do their homework but also do other activities, engage in physical activity, so that it's not piling on the homework. Really, isn't the answer. I, I, don't, yeah. I don't believe that. Well, I will say this, and it's certainly not meant to insult John, whose call I deeply respect. It's meant to insult our educational system that with all his homework, he got Stalin uh, 99% wrong. Stalin fought Hitler, in fact, from the invasion in 41 on. Hmm. All righty, we'll be back in a moment. The book, The Case Against Homework. I'm Dennis Prager. Hello, my friends. Dennis Prager here. 34 minutes past the hour. The Case Against Homework is the book. I happen to agree with the author, or co-author to be precise, Nancy Kalish. Wrote it with Sarah Bennett. Uh, Sarah is currently uh, being uh, being chased by 7,000 teachers right now across America. Could not come on. And uh, we, we agree here, folks. There is more to youth than school. I always believed in Mark Twain's statement, I never let school interfere with my education. I'll tell you about my uh, my youngest child. My older ones are married. My my youngest is 14. And uh, he, he actually likes school, and he is not at all a school type. But the biggest, a, a, well, not the biggest, but a major factor is the very small school uh, actually takes takes place in a house, and uh, the it's an accredited school, but it's a very small one, and the woman who runs it has them finish all their homework and then they go home. So they literally have no homework. Whatever after school work there is is done there. The kid is happy to do that because they hate the idea of coming home and doing more work. It makes a lo- it makes a lot of sense. You know, it's sort of like the homeschooler model, and homeschoolers are finding a lot of success, a lot of academic success. Their kids are loving to learn, and um, you know, they have time to pursue other interests and other passions, and spend time with their families as well. Yep, a lot of people don't agree with us, which is just fine. And let me take some of those. Robert in Louisville, Kentucky, you're on with you're on with the police. And uh, with <laughs> Nancy Kalish and me. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dennis. I'm sure you were not involved in the in the chase. Go ahead. Hi, Dennis. I, I agree with you on just about every subject. Uh, yeah, I love your show, but I have to say I passionately disagree with your position. Well, isn't that a relief? <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, I actually think that homework is where the real learning takes place. Subjects are introduced to students in school. But until you go home, digest the material, especially in mathematics, work through the problems repetitively, and it may take, it takes some students longer than others. And this time outside of school is vital to grasping and really gaining full knowledge of the subject. Well, I have two comments about that. I, again, respectfully disagree. The first is that child development um, psychologists would tell you that actually when in order for kids to learn and really retain information something called memory consolidation needs to take place and that means they need a break from the learning in order for their brain to actually consolidate and absorb the information but and that break would happen overnight or over a vacation for instance but another but at, thing at that some I point really you say, have to uh, like, again, going back to mathematics, mm-hmm. anyone who has any knowledge in, or any ability at all in mathematics knows that you don't learn math by just being presented the subject in a classroom. You can understand what the teacher's telling you, but if you don't do the problems outside of class, you will never succeed in math. You, can't, you cannot do it. 
I'm really glad you brought up math, because I think math is an excellent example, too, but for a completely different reason. According to the U.S. Department of Education, five math problems for homework is actually the perfect number of math problems for a child in, to learn a concept. And there are two really good reasons for this. The first is that five problems is enough to for the teacher to determine whether or not the child is able to do them properly and whether or not the child understands the concept without making the kid go on and do 40 other problems and get bored. But let's say you don't care about a child being bored, and many of us don't feel it's necessary sometimes to be bored in school, and I agree. Five problems is enough to determine whether a child doesn't understand the concept. And if a child is made to, it doesn't understand the concept and is made to slog through another 45 problems and does them incorrectly, that incorrect method is then cemented into the child's brain and will have to be unlearned. Compounding this problem is the fact that when a teacher has a class of 30 kids and assigns 50 math problems for homework at night, that's 1,500 math problems to grade. There is no way that that teacher is getting through those 1,500 math problems every night. So when a child misses the math problems and clearly doesn't understand, it's often missed by the teacher. And kids are truly being left behind because they're doing, all, they're doing problem after problem incorrectly and no one is noticing them. So I think math is a really good example, but for a completely different reason. It's just not effective to practice. All right, Robert, I really thank you for your call, and it was a very interesting answer. I think the best way to test it is to see that those of us who grew up doing little homework, and how did, how did that turn out? Back in a moment. My guest is Nancy Kalish, Dennis Prager, 44 minutes past the hour. The case against homework, which I happen to agree with her. Uh, from my own experience, from the experience of my children, I did not demand of my children much work in high school and so on. They all, well, all two of the three, I don't know what the third will be because he's too young, but two of the three developed tremendous interest in the intellectual life. They love, uh, they love books now. And I think school knocks a lot of that love out, especially with all of this homework that is given. It is not given really to learn anyway. It's given to, to get, big, or kids do it a lot, to get, gr- get great grades. So, uh, and, I, and I believe, you know, you're young once, and, and uh, I think if you allow yourself to be a kid, this is a, how do you like this theory of mine? I've, I've said this a number of times to my listeners, Nancy Kalish, author of The Case Against Homework. If you're allowed to be a kid when you're a kid, you'll want to be an adult when you're an adult. I, I, I think you're completely right, and I think it's so sad that, we're not paying more attention to what's going on with our kids in school and after school and how we're taking that away from them. It's just, it's... it's and we hard. don't do it. That, I, I keep emphasizing, adults don't do this. That's right. But we you come, know parents come home and they, and they do whatever they do. They watch television, which I'm not a big fan of, but, but they're, not doing, they're not doing more work. No, it's true, but you know what some parents are doing, which is unfortunate, is the loads are so heavy and their kids have such a hard time coping that some parents are really very, very involved in their kids. Oh, I know. (laughs) And, you know, we had a lot of parents. My my, my parents never did homework with me. This is another brand new thing. I know, and you know what happens? First of all, there's a couple of things. The first thing that happens is that we had a lot of parents admit to us that they had done either part of their kids' homework or all of their kids' homework because when it's 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night and your fifth grader is hysterical because she can't finish her math, her math sheet, you know, guess who's going to fill it in? Because, again, parents are so worried. Parents are as worried as kids are about grades. So that's actually sort of teaching your kid to cheat, to put you know, to put it plainly, which is not a good thing. And it's also not developing your kid as any kind of independent learner. What you're showing that your child is, well, you can't do it on your own. I have to rush in to rescue you. And it's why there are so many parents these days who are actually, I can't believe this when I found this out, who are actually buying second copies of their kids' college textbooks in order to, quote, unquote, help their kids with their homework in college. It's really a terrible situation. Plus, it causes tremendous amounts of stress and arguments between parents and kids. All right, we got more people who disagree. Well, we, I took all the, I, well, I took only disagreeers. Let me, let me okay. try to vary it here. 
And here's a teacher, actually, from Fulton, California. Where is Fulton, Kristen? Oh, it's Folsom with an S. Ah, I got it wrong here. We will uh, flagellate uh, Eva later. What, what is it, Folsom? Yeah, F- Folsom, like uh, Johnny Cash, Folsom City Blues. Gotcha. I, I still don't know where it is. Sorry, it's outside of Sacramento. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, go, uh, go ahead, Kristen. Okay, so uh, I am calling in support of your uh, topic because I've been a teacher for eight years in math and science. And basically my opinion of having kids do homework is they're, they're just not doing it at home. Um, and so as a teacher, you've got to give participation points. You know, they're either doing it or they're not. And, you know, 80% of the kids come back not, not having done their homework. So that is not a true indication of whether they're learning or not. Just because they don't do their homework doesn't mean they don't grasp the concept. So it's kind of a negative um, way to grade. And then the, one of also the biggest problem, especially with math, is that when the teacher teaches it a certain way in the classroom, the students go home, the parents have this whole other way, or they don't have a clue. So really there's, they're either being instructed in a, in a in an additional way at home how to do the math problem, which could be correct, might be incorrect, and then, or they're not getting any help at all. So then there's just kind of mass confusion about homework, especially when you get into middle school and high school level, you know, uh, concepts in math and science. Thank you, Kristen. Nancy? Kristen, it's so true. Why would you want someone who's not trained to teach uh, your, your child teaching your child? So why would you want your, a parent doing it who, you know, has to really think back to remembering how to do fractions? Yeah, and, exactly. And can't I can't remember. Do, yeah, it's a I, mess. Right, I can't do any of that. Yeah, In Virginia, they actually have a class. There's a, uh, an elementary school, I think, no, a middle school that has a class for parents once a week where right. they teach the parents the math that their kids are learning specifically. Oh, man. But I think that's ridiculous. That's, that's unbelievable. That's not a solution. Um, you know, it's true. All right, all right. You know what, Chris? I got to take some more calls. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. All right, let's go to Sarasota, Florida. Sally, hello, Sally. Hello there, Dennis. I just enjoy your program so much. Great, thank you. Well, um, I I was thinking of Hemingway when I was calling in because I was thinking. On his deathbed, it's reported that he said it is all true <laughs> just before he died. And I was thinking about the fact that I very much, I'm a former teacher. My dad was a school superintendent. I come from a family of educators. But um, I am very much sympathetic to seeing children come home double over with backpacks that just you couldn't even imagine what's in those things and what they're doing at home when they get there. But my uh, my point actually is that I do believe that homework, when it's carefully done, has been shown by research studies to raise children's test scores by 10 points. It takes 20 minutes a night of reinforcement of the uh, skills that were learned in school to raise their children's uh, raise children's uh, uh, test scores, and I do believe that the reinforcement at home is very important, and I uh, very much support homework. All righty, I thank you, Sally. I I, I have to thank you too, uh, Nancy Kalish. Okay, thank you. It's a been a pleasure to talk to you. The book is the case against homework, how homework is hurting our children, and what we can do about it. So good luck to you. Thanks so much for having me You're on. You're very welcome. I, stay on, folks, because I want to summarize some of your calls here. It's a fascinating one from Diana. She often does her third graders' homework for him because otherwise he doesn't get to participate in physical education or recess. Can you imagine that? Back in a moment. Well, I must say, a lot of you don't agree, and I appreciate that. And so I, I, for those of you who are 100 percenters, and I wonder if there are any, given my takes on so many different issues. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure I lost some of the 100 percenters like I did uh, my uh, my friend there in Louisville earlier. But, you know, folks, I, I do think that school is a bit uh, over, not a bit, often overrated. A human being is made up of so much. I'm not a studies fan, but that study that this woman, Nancy Kalish, who, who I just had on, who wrote the case against homework, 
where she said that the best predictor of later college, I think it was later college success, was whether or not the kids had time with the family. In that case, it was the family meal, but there could be a whole host of ways of having time with the family. And and I believe that. I, I ask you, my friends, I ask you to think about your own lives. I think adults don't do this often enough. Ask yourself, now that you're an adult, what makes for a successful adult? And by successful, I mean one who can navigate life. Life is hard. Who can Who can find happiness in life, who can mature well, who has friends, uh, who is, uh, has a, a way of sustaining him or herself uh, through, through meaningful work. I mean, a- ask yourself and, and find, tell me what correlation you find between that and, and school success. I don't think you'll find much. I don't think you'll find any. There are people who did great in school who do great in life. There are people who do awful in school who do awful in life. But by and large, it's, the mixture is too great. And I, and I do want to make this appeal on behalf of kids, and that is allowing kids to, to be a kid. We already rob their childhood with the invasion of their innocence with all the sexuality that permeates our society. That's, that's one way they're robbed of their childhood. Then they're, then they're told to uh, work uh, in in school, I mean, it's one thing if they worked outside of school. I mean, I wouldn't even mind that if the kid after school did 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 work, uh, I don't know, washing dishes at a restaurant, even. I mean, but but more schoolwork is it going to engender a love of the of the subject? You you, you have to read more of Shakespeare tonight. Do you think I love Shakespeare because of high school? I, I love Shakespeare despite high school. All the things that are assigned to you, you often then never read as an adult. Now, for some people, high school has triggered a, a terrific love of learning. If you had a terrific teacher, that is exactly what is possible. But it's the terrific teacher that matters, not the assignment of the homework. Eric and Diana and Tracy and Dana uh, and, and the, the lines whose names are not up, please uh, forgive me. It always hurts not to be able to take calls, especially when you've waited. But please give this some thought. And the book was called The Case Against Homework. And you're listening to The Dennis Prager Show. Mm-hmm. 